Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering Aurora HDR 2018. Welcome to our final lesson, lesson four in our Mastering Aurora HDR 2018 video series. And in this lesson, we're gonna process a single image. And I mentioned before that about half of the images I send into Aurora HDR 2018 are single images. It does a great job of processing a single image. And I think you'll agree, once we process this image that I took in Virginia Beach, when I was standing on the beach taking this shot, it was maybe an hour after sunrise, and it was gorgeous. The sky was just like beautiful. The beach was just glowing. It was really something. But as often happens when you're shooting raw, it just came out really flat and blah. So we're going to just process this in Aurora HDR 2018. So we'll close this down. And I want to show you another way. Uh, those of you that use Apple computers, Macs, could load images into Aurora HDR 2018 by simply dragging the images onto the icon in the dock. I don't think you could do that with Windows. But if you have a Mac, you just grab the image, and there is Aurora HDR 2018, and we'll just drag it on there. And you can see that it immediately opened up into Aurora HDR 2018. Now, tone mapping, you're going to click that because we're going to tone map this single exposure. And the little gear here will only have chromatic aberration removal available. Of course, we're not going to be doing any ghost removal because there's not multiple images. So I'm just going to leave it like that, and I'm going to go create HDR. So it will do some tone mapping to the image. You can see already it brought the clouds out a little more. There is before, I'm going to click on the eyeball, and after, before, after. We could just do this little slider thing here. Now, no preset was added to this. This is just tone mapped image. As simple as that. Now, I mentioned in the last lesson that I usually like to add a preset and then kind of adjust it from there. But for the sake of your education, I'm just going to process this one right from the beginning without using a preset so we could go over some of these filters a little more and kind of reinforce what we already learned. We usually, at least I, I mean, you don't have to go in order either, top to bottom. You could jump around. But I do like to start with the HR, HDR basic panel first. Now, I think uh, white balance is all right, so I'm not going to really do much there. Let's see what HDR enhanced does. And you can see that really does a lot for our sky. I like that. So we're going to bring that up to bring some of that detail into our sky. Um, it really was spectacular. I really can't mention enough how really spectacular that sky was. Um, and we're going to bring Smart Tone down. You can see it helps further bring out a little bit of detail. Maybe that's just a little bit too much. A lot of times I found um, just messing with those two sliders alone, you know, is enough. You really don't have to do a lot with highlights and shadows and whites or blacks. But for the sake of argument, let's see. Bring that whites all the way down. It kind of made it look blah. I'm going to bring that back up. And blacks. See if we could just clip a little bit right in there. Maybe that's a little bit too much. And just eyeball it. And like I said, it is a little crooked. So I'm going to just jump up here real quick and open up the crop to at least it appears to be just slightly crooked. Kind of hard to say because the dock is not <laughs> particularly straight. So we'll click done. All right, so I think my basic panel is done. Let's go to color. Now let's see if we bring saturation up. It gets a little bit too colorful for me. Now that's my own taste. You might like less saturated, more saturated than me. So, but I am going to bring vibrance up a little bit, and I don't think color contrast is going to do anything that I particularly like. So I'm going to leave it like that. HDR structure, usually I'll just come in here and I'll start moving stuff around and see if I like the effect or not, and I don't like anything HDR structure is doing. 
So we're going to leave that. Microstructure, there's not really a lot of things in here that are small and intricate or delicate that I want to bring out. So I'm not going to do anything with that. So I'm really not doing anything at all with the HDR structure filter. HDR denoise, there does seem to be some noise in here, but nowhere else. Now, when you do HDR denoise, it will soften your image a little bit. So a lot of times I like to do the HDR denoise on another layer and just remove the noise with the brush where I want it removed, similar to what we did in the last video where we got rid of that kind of bad looking drywall job that was done in the church below those stained glass windows. So I'm going to save that. Maybe we'll do that on another layer. Image radiance. Let's see what that does. Nothing I like in this image. Although I kind of like what it did to the sky a little bit. I could add that maybe to another layer, but maybe not. We'll see. Polarizing filter. I don't really care for that either on this image. Details boost. I'm not sure we're going to need that either. We'll do small details, not really much there. Medium, not much there either. And large, really not too much there. Uh, not much really there. Let's see with glow. I don't really care for that on this image. I kind of like the detail on these clouds, and I think glow kind of takes away that detail. Top and bottom, let's see if we take the top down a little bit or up a little bit. Um. I don't know. I kind of like it the way it is. I guess I'm being a little fussy. Uh, tone curve. Let's add a little bit of contrast with the tone curve. So I'm going to just pull down here, put a small S curve in this, and go right about here and push up. And then let's see before, after. There's before, there's after. There's before, there's after. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. It really was a very warm kind of glow this morning. So I really like that. The HSL. Now we really didn't touch this filter at all. Um, really what it is, is you could adjust the hue of these different colors, the saturation of those colors, and or the luminance of those colors. Now, uh, typically, usually, I don't mess with the hue at all. You could make the red either, let's do a color that actually does something, maybe, let's say blue. You could make the blue like, you know, like more towards green or more towards purple. It's up to you what you want to do with you, but like I said, I typically won't do anything at all with you. Saturation, though, I tend to do stuff with. What I like to do with saturation on images that have grass in them, I like to take the yellow saturation and just bring it up just a little, usually around 10 to 20, not much more than that. Now, in this case, we have the sand, so it is affecting the sand a little bit. So we'll bring it up to like 20. Then I'll take the green, I'll leave that alone, but I'll go to blue uh, saturation where it has sky, and I might just do a tiny bit of increased saturation there, like 5, 10, not a lot. Where I do, though, is luminance. What I'll do with luminance, it's actually adjusting the brightness of these specific colors. I'll go to blue and I'll bring luminance down. It tends to make your blue sky darker, kind of like what that polarizer does. All right? Then with yellow and green, I like to bring out the yellow highlights in the grass. And to do that, I already brought the saturation of yellow up a little bit. Then I'll go to the luminance and I'll make the yellow a little brighter. Okay, you can see it's really affecting the buildings over here in this specific image. And then I'll take the green down a little bit. So it kind of gives you a little more depth. You kind of have those yellow highlights of the grass showing a little more prominently and the darker greens of the grass like as a nice base. For it. Now you can see what it did just for this image here. We'll click before and after, before and after. Now really I don't care for it as much on this image, so we're going to just reset these. We could reset the whole thing by clicking that backwards arrow up there. But that gives you an idea what the HSL tab will do. And in that other video series that I'll be doing, I mentioned it's called Aurora HDR 2018 Tips and Tricks. I will get into a lot more detail with this HSR panel. I think a lot of you probably use this in other programs. It's prominent in Lightroom. So, um, you know, that's why I didn't go to it, uh, get into it in too much depth in this video series. Now, color toning, I mentioned, is the same thing as split toning in Lightroom. And you could really tone the highlights one color and tone the darker shades a different color. 
Now, for this image, let's just say I want to try to get more of a yellow tone in those highlights up there. So I could do something like that. And I think that looks nice. The shadows, there's really not a lot of shadow in this image. But if there were, if you want to make it more of a film look, bring your highlights a little bit um, yellow and your shadows a little bit blue. And that will give you kind of a film look. For this specific image, I don't think I need to do anything. And then this balance slider is how far into the midtones. Do you want the midtones to favor the highlight color you just dialed in, in this case? Or do you want it to favor more of the shadows color? So you could do that with this balance slider here. Now let's just try to get a little more acceptable. Just a little bit like that I think looks kind of cool. Now uh, dodge and burn, what I like to do a lot of times with dodge and burn is just to add a little more emphasis to different parts of the image. Now in this case I'll do start painting, I'll click there, and what I like to do is I'll lighten the lighter parts a little bit more. So I have the lighten brush, I want to have my strength relatively low like at 1820 and I'll come in here in this lighter part of the water here and I'll get a smaller brush by hitting that left bracket key and I'll kind of lighten these lighter parts of the water a little bit then I'll get the darkened brush and I'll make sure my strength is again lower and I'll take these darker parts and I kind of make those sometimes a little darker and it just adds some depth to the shot. And you could come in here, let's say, and you could make, uh, here, let's um, take strength even down a little more. And you could kind of make this little like sand that's darker, a little bit darker, just a little bit. And then what you want to do is come with the lighten. And you could come in here with the lighten part, a bigger brush. And remember, every time you make a brush stroke, you're adding to it. So we're at like 18%. There's 18%. Then it's like double, so like 36% theoretically. If you want to back out of your last couple adjustments, you could use this undo right here. You could also hit Command-Z if you have a uh, Mac. That's um, Z as in Zebra or Control-Z as in Zebra if you have a PC. So every time I hit that, I'm actually going one step back in my history panel right there. So a little bit of dodge and burn. I'm going to add a bit of a vignette. And let's see, let's affect the size a little bit. That, yeah, that's not too bad. Now, I mentioned there is some noise in here, so I want to get rid of the noise. So I'm going to get another layer. I'm going to hit this plus sign right there and add a new adjustment layer. And I mentioned I want to get rid of noise, so I'm going to go down to HDR Noise. Actually, I'll name this uh, Noise like that. I could write Removal, I guess, but we'll use Noise. And we'll go here, kind of get rid of that noise. The Smooth is... Kind of like a detail slider again, but it's backwards. If you go to the left, you're act actually adding kind of detail. If you go to the right, you're kind of taking away the detail and kind of smoothing everything out a little more. And boost is just kind of an overall volume control. You can see how it affects the sky. Usually, I don't move boost too much. I'll mess around with the amount in smooth to get it the way I like it. Now, it looks nice right here. I kind of really smoothed everything out. So that's why I put it on another layer. I'm going to get the brush by clicking right here with the brush tool. And I want to paint. And I want the size. Uh, that would be good. And softness 100, opacity 100. And we're going to paint the effect in there. And you can see as soon as I clicked, it removed actually the effect from everywhere except exactly where I'm painting. And you could look at the mask by clicking there on that little eyeball up there. Remember, we all did this in the very last episode. And of course, you could just get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key and come in here. And I mean, that's probably good enough right there. Just like that, we'll turn our mask off there. When we're done, we go over here on the far right and we click that Done button. 
And I'd say that that is good. There is our before image, with no processing at all. Again, this was a single image. And there's our after. And that is closer to the way I remember the scene. It was really a very, very bright, uh, warm morning. The sun was uh, rising on the left. It was up for about an hour, really golden. And the uh, clouds were really spectacular. And there's before and after. So you can see how, what a great job Aurora HDR 2018 does on a single image. And that's, um, you know, really one that I wanted to show you. And now you know why I often will take a single image into this program and process it. It really does a nice job. So that's it for this video series. Probably the shortest video series I've ever done, only four episodes. But I think it really got you going on mastering Aurora HDR 2018. It really showed you all the critical features you need to know. Again, I'll be starting within a few days that other video series that will be on YouTube and my website exclusively called Aurora HDR 2018 Tips and Tricks. So look for that. We'll get into a little more depth on some things we might not have touched on in this video series. Also, the all the uh, images I used in this video series are available. If you look below the video in the description, you'll see a link. You could go there and purchase them. They're only 10 bucks. Not only are they going to be the video, the images I used in the series, but they'll be the entire bracket. So if I took seven images but only used four in a video or in, in as a bracket in a video, you'll get all seven. Plus, there's going to be a, a few other images, bracketed images, that I didn't do at all in this series. I just want you to have them so you could practice uh, doing these HDR brackets and processing them in Aurora HDR 2018. Also, just a reminder, uh, in the bottom there's a link. You could purchase my package of 50 Aurora HDR 2018 presets. Um, just click the link and you'll get information on how, and how you could purchase them and they're available for immediate download. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.